in the Stone Age, 6,000 years ago is when humans first began eating soup. The archaeological evidence tells us it was a hippopotamus soup. That must have been one big bowl. Since then, we've evolved just a little bit. Today, we have alphabet soup, bird's nest soups, bisque, borscht, broth, and chowders, just to name a few. The flavors and possibilities are almost endless. On today's menu, we create three comfort classics, split pea and ham, classic tomato, and French onion. I'm Garrett Shack, and today, that's what we're cooking on the coast. Nothing warms a soul better than a hearty soup. Today we have three on the menu. Split pea and ham, classic tomato, and a French onion stoop. Let's get souping. Okay, this, this episode here is action packed. I've got three different pots on the go already, and that's just the beginning of where we're going here. If you look over here, we've got our onion soup started. What, what else do you need in there except a whole bunch of onions? So I've been chopping onions like a madman here. And of course, uh, we don't want to have any crying on television, so I'm making sure to use a really sharp knife, which helps. So we'll pile those in, make sure we got a nice heat going on in there, and we're really going to sweat those down. In this case, it's actually okay if we get a little bit of coloring, because we want that deep brown, rich color in our onion soup. In the giant pot that we have over here, we have uh, mirepoix, we've started our split pea and ham, or in this case we're using a red split lentil, which is just as delicious. So what we have here is our mirepoix in the pot, and we have this smoked pork hock. Doesn't that look delicious? So that's going to sit in our soup. Those onions are strong. And really render right down. So we'll let that cook away. Give our onions another little stir. So tomatoes, the skin is actually, it's, it's indigestible, if that's actually a word. You can't actually digest uh, the tomato skin. So what you want to do is for a soup like this, is get rid of that skin. So we're just going to core it using a nice sharp knife. And then we're going to score the opposite end. So just, again, score ever so slightly. If we go too deep, the, our, the juice of the tomato will pour out into our boiling water here. So I have some water that's boiling away. And we're simply going to dip our tomatoes into that water. And they're literally going to be in there for about I don't know, 45 seconds, maybe. These were bigger tomatoes, so maybe maybe a minute or so. There we go, they're so big I don't have room for more, so I'll just do those three for now and we'll come back for that last guy. Don't worry, we'll get you. Now, turn our attention to the onions. I know what you're thinking, that's a lot of onions, but we're not done yet. I've actually got some shallots here as well. Let's chop them right up, and bang, into our soup. Uh, over to our split pea and ham. I want to add what's called a bouquet garni. And that's basically just this fancy tied up herb bundle here. And what it does is it enables us to impart all that flavor into the soup and then uh, actually pull it out afterwards so we don't have to worry about taking off all those stems and stalks. Now let's have a look and we'll add some stock to that so that can start simmering away because that's going to take quite some time. I've got a ham stock here and I know what you're thinking at home, you're going, Oh man, it's always using these fresh stalks and all that kind of stuff. Well, I work in a restaurant, so we have them. If you don't, by all means, use some of the other things. Use the bouillons. Just find a really good one. It doesn't have a million different things on the ingredients list. Looks great. It's okay if the uh, ham hock's not quite covered. We can flip it over as the cooking goes. And give our onions another stir. Gorgeous white onions. Got all those shallots collecting through there. There we go. Now, I'd like you to have a look at this, because you're going to see as I pull out these tomatoes, that skin started peeling away already, but you're not done. We have to get this into, sort of shock it into our ice bath right away. And it goes over into our ice bath. Perfect, that's gonna shock it and sort of shrink, just like an egg when you throw that into the water. It's gonna shrink it right down and that uh, onion, or that tomato skin will be really easy to peel away. Let's start seasoning our onion soup while those tomatoes are resting and hanging out in there. I've added some salt already, but I'm gonna add a little bit more. Another bouquet garni, this time we're using sage and thyme uh, and a bay leaf. Our last, our last one, we didn't have the, the uh, sage in there, all we had was rosemary. I want some brandy. I'm gonna turn up the heat here, and this is the fun part. This, this is where we get to have some, some action shots. So we're gonna add some brandy into our pan, and we want this brandy to get nice and warm. Brandy is uh, like a, a, a classic ingredient in uh, in a French onion soup. I'm being very careful if you're doing this at home. We're just gonna light it, hopefully. 
without losing an arm. <laughs> I don't know, I don't use those things. I'm not a smoker, there we go. Okay, anyway, never mind. Better that you don't try it at home anyway. I'd hate to see somebody's fire alarms going off. See, we're starting to get some color on this, uh, on these onions. That's exactly what we want. We've got the flavor in there now from the brandy. We've got our bouquet garni. We wanna add, uh, we have some salt. We've done that already. And next, we're gonna blast in some stock. Again, use the bouillon, I'm okay with it. You won't offend me. I've got a lovely beef stock here. Trish, traditionally, the French onion soup is always made with a beef stock. There we go. And who wants to break tradition, right? Delicious, okay. There are a couple of these things away. Last but not least, I wanna add a couple more seasonings. And then we'll head off to a little break. Worcestershire sauce adds a really nice little acidity and a little bit of depth of flavor, and then, a, and then a, a spicy sauce like Tabasco or something like that. Give it a little stir. Okay, check on our ham. Perfect. Okay, we're rolling along. We'll be back later in the show to finish off our hearty soups. But after the break, we're getting out of here to do some exploring of our own. You'll want to stick around for that. Here on location at an amazing food truck and I can't wait to try some Cajun, authentic Cajun Creole cooking. We're at Streetcar named New Orleans and with me today is Billy. How are you doing Billy? Hey, how's it going? Hey, good buddy. I good. Can't, uh, I'm so stoked to try the food. I love oh, Cajun, I love Creole cooking. Uh, what got you started doing this? Well, you know, I was, I'm born and raised in New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, I cooked there in fine dining for about 15 years, and then I met the right Canadian girl, <laughs> and she took me up here to Victoria. Nice. And this is our restaurant now. It's on wheels. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. That's that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and what's uh, what's sort of your specialty? Like, what would you be cooking up for us today? So today I'm going to be making a roast beef po' boy, oh. and po' boys are really big in New Orleans. Um, nice. Back in the 30s, there was a streetcar strike, kind of mm -hmm. tying in with a streetcar in New Orleans. Yeah. Uh, and this strike led to the creation of the po' boy. Right. Uh, there was a local grocery store, the Martin Brothers, started feeding these striking uh, streetcar workers. Yeah. And as they would see them coming down the street, they say, oh, here comes another one of them poor boys. Let's fix them a sandwich. Hence, now the, the po' boy, boy which has, you know, been shortened and kind of colloquialized. Brilliant. The well, they don't pay me enough on this show, so I'm a po' boy for sure. Let's go grab one. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, Billy, so I'm always amazed at how much food you guys can pump out of these carts. And uh, um, so where do you start with your po' boy? How do you get this sort of rolling? Here? So the po' boy starts with good New Orleans style French bread. Okay. Um, it, you know, the, the bread makes the sandwich. And down in New Orleans, it's a really uh, light crust, yet yeah. crisp and pillowy bread. Uh, it's some kind of, it's bread that really can't be duplicated outside of the city, even 10 miles outside of the yeah, city. Right. So when I moved here to Victoria and found this bread, yeah. I was just amazed. Jumping for it, joy, it, eh? is, it is New Orleans style French bread. Nice. However, cool. you know, in New Orleans, they're in a three foot long baguette. Yeah. I found these perfect, perfectly sized uh, po' boys just, just for you know, the individual. Well, it makes it easier for you too, it, right? It's great. Perfect. So uh, I start with this great French bread. Yeah. Well, you can hear the crust, hey? Yeah. When you get it's, and then the inside is just like a pillow. Oh, look at that. Now, yeah, I won't have a nap on that, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is that <laughs> That soft. looks awesome. So, Traditionally, a po' boy has, it comes dressed. Right. And what dressed means is lettuce, tomato, pickles, and mayonnaise. Okay. So that's how I serve mine, unless someone wants uh, to leave off a couple of those. Yeah, fair So enough. a nice, nice, good slathering of mayo. A few fresh tomatoes, fresh tomatoes right on there. Oh, they look and then shred, finally shredded iceberg lettuce. Yeah, it's got to be the iceberg. It's the right? iceberg, you yeah. know. These Love are all it. the traditional things, and I don't, I don't like to mess with tradition. <laughs> I, like, I like that about you already. That's uh, great. Uh, along those <laughs> same lines of not messing with tradition. Yeah. Regular, just hamburger dill pickles. Nice. You know, I could make my own fancy pickles, but like I say, I don't want to mess with tradition. Yeah, we're keep, we're keeping it authentic, right? I mean, it says it right on your, uh, right on your truck. Yes, that's right. <laughs> um, and then with the roast beef po' boy, I always like some Swiss cheese. So I put a little Swiss cheese on there, and now we'll go grab some roast beef on this po' boy. Perfect, yeah. 
Oh, Billy, look at that roast beef. That looks fantastic. So what's the process here? This isn't just thrown in the oven and walk away. No, no, this, this, there's a lot of love that goes into this roast beef. Nice. This is my pride and joy right here. <laughs> nice, I love that. Uh, so it starts, I start with a nice bed of um, what we call the Trinity down in New Orleans. Okay, Celery, yeah. onion, and bell pepper. Very nice. So I lay a big inside round roast on this Trinity, put some carrots and garlic in there with it also. Yeah. And then a nice uh, uh, dry rub. Okay. That I put That's on here. And right. then this goes into the oven with some stock oh. uh, and roasts overnight, low and slow, for about 12 hours. Nice. And then when I take it out, I just look at it and it falls apart. <laughs> you, I don't even have to touch that, it. You give it that mean look, hey? Yeah, the way it goes. <laughs> so, nice. so this is, it's just love on a bun right here uh, on, on some po' boy that. bread. And then uh, I just load up the roast beef here on our dressed po' boy. Oh, that looks so good. And let me put it on a plate for you. For sure. Look at that. That, that, and doesn't, there she is. Uh, that doesn't look like it's a, a one-hander there, man. No, you know, the, the, uh, the roast beef po' boys in New Orleans are usually uh, judged by the amount of napkins you need. <laughs> That's, mine's about a three or four napkin I was going to say, it looks yeah. like a three or four. Do yeah. you mind if I go ahead and grab a bite? Yeah, this get some, man. Go ahead. Oh my god. I might go for four or five napkins, mate. Holy smoke, though, that is fantastic. Thank you very much. That meat is so tender, and you're absolutely right about the bread. It's absolutely perfect. Thanks, Gareth, buddy. Thanks yeah. for having us on your yeah. truck. I know you got a busy day ahead of you, so we'll try and get out of your way. We'll be right back after the break. This is awesome. We're going back to this. This is <laughs> We're back in the kitchen to finish off our hearty soups. Split pea and ham, classic tomato, and a delicious French onion. So let's keep rolling here. So we've got our French onion soup that's been simmering away here nicely. You can see the bouquet garni is sort of disintegrated down and parted all that flavor in there. We've got our split pea and ham. Uh, while we were away, I added the lentils and just let this cook away. And you can see they've sort of uh, disappeared on us a little bit, which is great. We want that. It's going to be a nice, rich flavor. And I've also pulled the ham bone out of the out of the broth now because we want that to cool just a little bit so I can shred all the meat off. But we'll set that aside for a second. I've got a pot here that's nice and hot. I want to start making our tomato soup. We've got shallots going in there. In they go. And then you remember our tomatoes? So basically what we're doing here is called tomato. If we were to dice them up all fine and get rid of the uh, get rid of the seeds, we'd be, it would be called tomato concasse, which is uh, a classical French term for diced or diced up tomatoes. Uh, in this case, this is going to be a pureed soup. So we're going to use a little hand blender, kind of boat motor looking thing, and it's going to puree it all up. So we don't have to worry about being super, super technical on our dicing. In with the shallots, we'll throw our tomatoes. Okay, we're going to let that simmer away a little bit, add a fair bit of salt, tomatoes love salt. And then we want to add a few different herbs. I've got some fresh basil. I want to put a fair bit in there. Just a rough chop. There we go, into our soup. Don't waste any. And I've got some fresh oregano here. So we're going to pull a few of these leaves off and throw them in there as well. We don't want the stem though, that's for sure. It gets a little woody. We definitely don't want any of that in there. And then give it a quick little stir. So all the moisture is going to start running out of this. And what we need, just to top it up, is a little bit of veg stock. Tomatoes have lots of moisture in them, but we want to help them along. We're going to make this a fairly thin soup. So we're going to add some vegetable stock. We're keeping this one here vegetarian. So here we have some veg stock. I'll just pour it right in there. Not quite covered. Excellent. There we go. You can always add a little bit more later. It's a lot harder to take it away. Bring that up to a good simmer. Perfect. While that's coming along, let's start working on these other soups. There's a few things we need to do to finish these off. All these lovely French onions, or all French onion soup, all these lovely onions, that broth. Let's give it a little taste here. See how it is. Oh, delicious. Mmm, very nice. You can taste that beef broth in there. All those onions have sweetened up nicely and added a real richness to the stock or soup. 
We're gonna ladle that right into a classic French onion bowl. Oh yeah, this is a big portion right here. Okay, now this soup here is classically served broiled with a big chunk of crusty bread and lots of cheese. Ooh, just like they did in the old days, breaking bread over a bowl of soup. And stick that right in the top just like this. Perfect, very nice tear I might add. And then we have the stinkier the better is what I say for this type of cheese here, for this type of dish. So I've got this amazing, it's really high alpine, so that means like a Swiss Alps kind of cheese. This one's a local one made. Uh, if you can find local cheeses, definitely use those, but it's uh, whew, it's got some funk to it. I love that in a, in a cheese, especially for French onion soup. Okay, I'm just gonna put it in this little dish here because that cheese is gonna melt around and we'll fire it underneath the broiler here. Perfect. Now that's not going to take long at all. Let's turn our attention to our split pea and ham soup. Tearing the bones, quite simple. Just pull it right off. You can see because it's cooked so long in there nicely, I'm going to add that back to the pot. Because it's cooked in there so nicely, all these pieces are just ready to fall right off. I'll just give it a quick chop. There we go. And we'll get those right back into the pot. And we're going to serve this ham and, ham and lentil soup or the ham and split pea soup. We're going to serve it right in a really super cool bread bowl. And that's right, you can eat the bowl. Isn't that fantastic? So let's put that right here. And then I'm just gonna ladle it right into the middle of this guy. Look at that, all those vegetables, the ham. Really fill it right up. There we go. Onto our plate. Another piece of crusty bread. Now let me see here, I think I have. This is just fun for presentation. This is just the uh, my inner chef coming out saying, "Hey, let's uh, let's make this look really funky." Here it is. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. Let's put that right in here, just so people know we're really cooking with uh, with with pork hocks right there. Excellent. In the meantime, let's turn our attention back to our soup here. It's simmering away nicely here. All the tomatoes are breaking down. All those oregano is starting to build in flavor in there. Some of our friends here, a little spicy sauce. This is all about balancing out the flavors. You should just get a touch of heat. You want a little bit of that sort of earthiness from the Worcestershire sauce. A touch of salt in there. You want those flavors to all sort of be nicely balanced. Remember earlier in the show, I touched on uh, the boat motor type thing. Well, let's pull that out right now. Here we go. Look at that. So we're gonna fire this right in here, being very careful. Hopefully you can see this out there. That's just basically gonna puree this guy right down into a nice, nice pureed soup. Looks great. See all those flecks of oregano and basil. I'm getting a little steam bath here too, which is fantastic. It's great for my complexion. See, not only is cooking good for your stomach, but it's good for your body too. Let's give it a little taste. Mm, I wouldn't change a thing about that soup. I get the basil, I get the oregano, it's fantastic. Let's get it into our little cup over here. Fun little way to present it. Okay, I like to garnish it just with a little basil pesto. You can buy this at the store, or grind up your own basil, that's all good. And then a touch of sour cream. Again, it just adds color, adds a little bit of interest to the soup. And down it goes. Now let's check on our French onion soup. We're almost done. Oh, look at that. Whoo! Oh, that broiler, that broiler was really going. Look, we got a little bit of char on the top there. Okay, that's not my favorite part, so we might want to just scrape a little bit of that off if we can here. You know, we want our guests to uh, enjoy the food too. There we go. Using my tongs, because that's going to be ripping hot. Let's see if we can get this over to the bowl without, uh, over to our plate without hurting anybody. There we are, and we're almost there. I've got a bit of grainy mustard to finish up my split pea and ham soup, our French onion, and our tomato. Look at those, we even got saltines for that comfort factor. All right, there you have it. Three hearty soups to keep you warm and toasty. Split pea and ham, French onion, and a classic tomato soup. Let the slurping begin. 
Now, what better way to cruise into comforting soups than with the perfect pairing? With me today is Bill from Liquor Planet. How are you, sir? Wonderful. Thanks for coming glad, on the show. Glad to be here. Yeah. So, uh, what did you choose? Uh, for the soups, I picked a uh, Behringer Cab from the Napa Valley. Nice. Uh, it uh, it has lots of fruit, but very low tannins. Oh, okay. A uh, soup doesn't like tannins. Right, right. So our cheeks won't yeah. get all puckered up yeah. as we uh, drink this guy. Right? And, and great acidity also. So. Okay, very nice, very mm -hmm. nice. I know this, I mean, I know this wine myself, and it's a great wine. So it I is. think it's got lots of body, so it'll hold up to the, the three different actual soups that Absolutely. we have here. So it's a great pairing for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and so at Liquor Planet, like, uh, I mean, Liquor Planet sounds like I can get pretty much anything there, but you know, maybe you can tell me a little bit more about it, yeah? Well, it's... Uh, uh, family owned and operated. Oh. It's uh, the largest independent uh, liquor store in the province. Great. It's uh, around 14,000 square feet. Holy smokes, that's have, almost as big as my house. That's right, that's right. <laughs> I was over there. It was I great. wish, yeah, yeah. Uh, also, um, we have tons and tons of wine. We have probably seven or 8,000 different wines. Perfect. So I just chose this. Like, Somebody else might choose something else, but come and see me at Liquor Planet. And, nice, and you can and steer, you steer sort of in the right direction. Absolutely. Do you want to pour, and we can have a look Please. and see yeah. how it, uh, see the color on this guy? Oh, I love that sound, hey? <laughs> it's a great sound. Now, would you... Uh, wine, wine is my life. Oh, is it, hey? Oh, perfect. That sounds like a great life to me. I've been in the wine trade for 40-some-odd years. I started when I was eight. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, I don't know if we're allowed to say that on camera, so we'll, we'll edit that out later. Okay, but okay. Great, this looks fantastic. Absolutely gorgeous. And I mean, the Napa Valley is known for its big cab soaps, right? Like just true, true. Oh wow. So great uh, nose. Yeah, absolutely. Would you let this breathe a little bit? Would that be absolutely? A... You you could decant it, but uh, right now it doesn't really need it. It's been open for a, for a mm. little a short time right now. So oh wow. It is. It's wonderful. That's spectacular. Now I got to dig into a little bit of food here Ooh. and see. Uh, See, see if you actually uh, nailed it here. Go ahead and grab a spoon. Don't be okay. shy. Just watch, they might be a little hot there. Going to move this See, I'm left-handed. Mm. Now the tomato soup. A little bit of acidity, but quite uh, got nice sweetness to it as well. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. You're absolutely right. That, uh, that, that cab just holds up really nicely to that, uh, to that soup. Acid yeah. and then acid. Yeah, it's perfect. Tomato, tomato-based doesn't like uh, tannins. Right, so. so that one just marries really nicely. Thanks for that, Bill. You and I are gonna keep working on these and that bottle of wine, Super. Super. I gotta let the folks at home go. All Alrighty. Right? <laughs> Check out our website where you'll find more information on today's show and maybe a few surprises. I'm Gary Shack. thanks for watching, and don't forget to savor the flavor. All right, which one are we gonna try next? I'm gonna go for the, the split pan ham here. Yeah. See the See, that's what I base, base, base.